So now the ultimate goal of this circuit is going to be to charge this capacitor to 5 volts no matter what the voltage of the power source is above 5 volts and so to begin with we're going to have this circuit where we connect positive here through a protective resistor to limit the current to give a positive charge to this side of the capacitor and then the capacitor has to charge through the transistor to the negative ground so I have a resistor connected from positive to the positive side of the capacitor this is an electrolytic capacitor the negative side of the electrolytic capacitor is connected directly here to the emitter this is a PNP transistor and then the collector over here comes to negative so this transistor is a 2N2907 PNP transistor this just happened to be one I had laying around I used it before you don't have to use this one it may not be the best transistor for this one I didn't really research it I just threw it in there to test out the circuit so going from left to right the pins are emitter base collector the flat side of the transistor here is uh, pointing left we're looking at the flat side now but when the boards up the flat sides to the left so on the top we have the emitter you know this is the emitter because of the arrow base and collector down below the collector goes towards negative the emitter goes towards positive so now the transistor is going to act like a switch so we're going to take voltage readings of the capacitor and to do that we're going to add a red jumper to the positive side of the capacitor and then a blue jumper here to the negative side of the capacitor we're going to attach the multimeter so we can take a voltage measurement well we're testing out the circuit so now I have the meter hooked up to measure voltage I used alligator clips to connect those jumpers to our probes the black probes connected to the blue jumper and the red probes connected to the red jumper so now I'm going to apply a voltage from the 9 volt battery to both sides of the circuit remember this was a complete circuit and the capacitor does not charge that's because there's no current flowing through the circuit because the transistor is off right now before we can get current flow we have to turn the transistor on and so we'll use a pull down resistor so at the base of the transistor we're going to connect one end of the pull down resistor this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor we don't need much current at uh, this base and the other end connects to ground so positive current will actually come out of the base to ground but you need a slightly negative voltage here to get the transistor to conduct so I'll just insert the resistor right to that middle pin and then the other end of the resistor to the negative side of the power rail this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor so now we'll take a measurement of the voltage when we apply the battery to this circuit so the uh, lead here from this uh, resistor the 10k resistor connects directly to the negative rail so if I connect the negative side of the battery that's like connecting the whole rail to the negative side of the battery and we'll see what happens the capacitor charges to uh, almost 8 well 8 volts pretty much instantly so this battery is 8.5 volts it's a little older so it uh, charge the capacitor to almost the full battery voltage right away so we don't want that we want the capacitor to stop charging at about 5 volts so for that we'll add the Zener diode next so now the Zener diode the cathode the negative side of the Zener diode actually connects to the more positive side of the circuit that's the way Zener diodes work you put them in backwards now the positive sides going to connect directly to the base of the transistor which also heads towards the more negative side of the circuit as I said they're made to operate backwards so, so to see the side that's a cathode you look for the little black stripe and now that's going to connect where the capacitor connects and then the other end the anode is going to connect directly to the base of the transistor so the same row that we inserted one side of the resistor over here now this is a 5.6 volt Zener diode so 
this will conduct when there's a 5.6 volt difference on the two ends of the diode there when this side's more positive and this side's more negative by 5.6 volts so now we really have everything wired up for the actual part of the circuit there's no load other than the multimeter you can consider that the load and so now when I apply the 9 volt battery which dropped down to about eight and a half now you see the capacitor stops charging at about uh, 5.3 uh, amps and so this was a 5.6 volt zener we could use a little bit lower voltage zener to get closer to 5 volts but this this is good enough this was just a prototype uh, circuit all these components can be adjusted and changed uh, I had a much bigger capacitor at one time it didn't seem to make any difference so I threw in this smaller one but uh, this should give you a general idea how this circuit works once the capacitor gets to about 5.6 volts instead of charging then the current will go this way and that will allow positive current to the base of the transistor which will turn the transistor off so there will be no path for the capacitor to charge so now the point of the circuit is that instead of the multimeter you want to have about 5 volts for a load that can only handle about 5 volts so instead of the multimeter you'll put a little circuit in here that you want 5 volts and the other point of this circuit is that when the transistor is turned off because there's power applied and the capacitor is uh, charged to about uh, 5.3 volts then everything stops so you're not really wasting current whereas a lot of regulated power supplies there's still current flowing through I demonstrated this in my last video so this circuit was actually a success in in that sense but uh, I didn't perfect it either there's uh, improvements that can be made but uh, this gives you a general idea of how this circuit works